yesterday and the other day, we've started talking about books that we use inside the classroom. And then I went around and saw all your work. So I saw that you've already started writing down lesson plans for, um, for the reading activities. So can you recall what do you do before the story is actually presented to the students? Okay, we do pre-reading activities. And pre-reading activities contain three sub-activities, which are unlocking of difficulties or vocabulary development, motivation or schema activation, and the motive question or giving purpose for the listeners to listen. And then we present the literature to the students. And you had a fun day yesterday learning about different ways of presenting the stories to the students. So that is the during reading part. And so what comes after during reading is the post-reading activities. The post-reading components are, so these are the things that you can do after reading the story. Later, I will be discussing this, these one by one. So we have the engagement activities, the enrichment activities, the skills development, and activities across the curriculum. Let's look at a, an overview first of what these components are. So first are the engagement activities. Um, EA, or engagement activities, is a series of learning tasks that are given to the students after taking up literature while they are still engrossed in the text and are experiencing the essential elements of the story. So when we talk about the elements of the story, these are the characters, but the setting, correct. The main idea, the problem, the solution, there. Now, the engagement in the engagement activities, what we need to take note of is that we will talk about the story just presented. We will manipulate all these elements in order for the students to understand the story better. Another component is enrichment activities. So these, on the other hand, are activities that are related to the literature studied, but they go beyond the essential text. So we go outside the story. We can go to areas that will have to do with their lives. So these are the activities that we can do after discussing the story. They are more concerned with the exploration of individual response. That's why it is better if you give enrichment activities that are individually done. Because um, uh, the responses would be very diverse depending on the student already. They are more concerned with the exploration of individual responses or the learning of related concepts and themes. Another component is skills development. This is explicit teaching of a particular skill or sub-skill within the context of the literature studied. So then we will go into the sub-skills of reading. An example is um, talking about um, identifying and describing characters. So if we want our students to develop that skill, we would do explicit teaching in how to identify and describe characters. Another example could be recognizing the cause and effect. So using the story, we would be teaching recognizing cause and effect explicitly. When we talk about explicit teaching, there is a specific sequence of steps that the teacher does um, from directive until independent activities. Tomorrow, teacher is a teacher. Teacher Portia will be um, teaching explicitly how to do explicit teaching. 
And then we can also have across the curriculum. This is where the literature becomes integrated with all the other content areas. So we can do this. For example, we can teach concepts of addition using a specific story. We can use concepts of life cycle using a specific story. All right. Now, one very important thing when you present a piece of literature to the students is that you discuss the piece of literature. Why is discussion important? Can you think of a rationale? Why do we need to discuss? Eh, teacher, binasa naman namin sa kanila. Mukhang naintindihan naman nila. Mukhang nag-enjoy naman sila. Bakit kailangan i-discuss? Can you give me quick answers? Mind conditioning. Mind conditioning could be one. What else? Appreciation, yes. What else? Yes, ma'am. Okay, determining the level of comprehension. May narinig ako dito, ma'am? Level of understanding. Okay. Halimbawa kayo, nanonood kayo ng sine. Sabay-sabay naman kayong nanonood ng sine, di ba? But it would, you would be appreciating it more and understanding the movie more when you talk about the same movie after you do it. Yung daddy ko, he would always, he would always be um, interested why puro sisters kasi kami. After watching the same movie, until we go home, we talk about that movie. But there is a certain level of understanding that comes out. Kasi meron siyang napansin na hindi ko napansin. Deepening, correct. The same goes with books. According to Mortimer Adler, books not discussed lose their value. That's why we need a set of questions after listening or after presenting the story. Questions strengthen reasoning abilities of children as well as help them clarify and define their initial response to the text. This is where not only the teacher, but also the other classmates present um, are important. Kasi even their responses are essential. Even the teacher sometimes learns from the students when they talk about the same story. Now what the teacher needs to do is to weave the questions beautifully and efficiently, achieving the expressive objective. Pakipalitan yan. Expressive or insight. Now, I was also told that you've already discussed what expressive objectives are. Um, now, when you write your lesson plans and you state your expressive objectives, most of the time, they will come out when you discuss the story. So, napansin nyo yung mga sinulat nyo, as of the point, as of yesterday, hindi pa lumalabas yung uh, reflection ng expressive objectives. Now, when you list down your questions, you should always keep in mind kung ano yung expressive objective nyo. Sometimes, there are teachers who write expressive objectives really, really well. But, it is, they are not reflected in the questions. Bali wala siya. Hindi mo siya maa-attain. Now, you need to write um, attainable objectives na the end, you also need to know how to write questions that will bring them out. Okay. Uh, yesterday, you also talked about what the motive question is. So, what is a motive question? Okay, a motive question is a question that you throw to the student that will give them a purpose to listen to the story. 
The difference between motivation and motive is when you ask the students a motivation question, who can answer that question? Correct. The students using their experience, using their schema, using their background. Now, when you throw them the motive question, what will answer that question? Correct. That's why when you ask the motive question before reading the story, you don't answer it yet there. You hang it. Kaya nga may purpose sila. Meron silang, ay, hindi ko alam ang sagot sa tanong na yan. Pag nakinig ako, malalaman ko ang sagot sa tanong na yan. In effect, dapat hindi natin makalimutan sagutin yung tanong na yon after the story. Um, one tip that I give to my students when they decide to write their motive question, ang palagi kong sinasabi, you think of a motive question na masasagot siya sa bandang unahan ng kwento. Yes. You need immediate feedback or immediate uh, answer right after reading the story. Ideally, if you can, think of a motive question that will begin your discussion. Yan ang motive question. Now, I, I want to show you this, this frame and I want to ask you what this means before discussing it. Okay, ano kaya yung MQA? Okay. The answer to the motive question. Q2 is question 2, A2 is A. So what, what does this mean? What do all those arrows and lines and boxes mean? Yes, ma'am. Okay, transition of questions. What else? Sequence of questions. All right. The answer will lead to another question, and so on and so forth. It also shows the smooth transition from question to answer to question to answer and so forth. Oh. Simple to complex. Okay, before, uh, later, I was asked that we need to formulate our own questions. Before that, I want to show you first the five dimensions of reading comprehension or the levels of understanding or the levels of comprehension. How many of you have seen this? Alam na natin to, di ba? Review na lang sa atin to. Level one is literal comprehension. So this is the ability to obtain a low-level type of understanding by using only information explicitly stated in the text. In other words, what does that mean? Knowledge. Knowledge. Correct. What else? What do we mean when we say explicitly stated in the text? Literal. Literal. Correct. It is found. Pag hinawakan niyo yung libro, matuturo niyo yung sagot kasi nakasulat doon. It's evident. It is there. Knowledge level. So it clearly states facts and details. Sequence the facts. Identify the reference. Identify the characters. Association of quotation with the speaker. In other words, what kind of questions are these? Or can you give me an example of literal? The what? Where? When? Who? Yung, um, yung when pa nga will depend. Kasi sometimes, inferential yung sagot sa when. But when the answer is there, then it becomes literal. Even the how. The how can be a literal question. The why can also be a literal question. Depending on what, depending on what is stated in the text. Okay, so ito yung... Um, sa Tagalog, sino... 
Ano? Paano? Saan? Kailan? Etc. Etc. Next level. It's the inferential or interpretation. Um, some teachers would uh, describe this as the reading between the lines. Yung literal comprehension ay reading the lines. The inferential is reading between the lines. So the questions require answers that are not directly stated in the text, but the answers are in the story. Okay. Now, how do the children answer those questions? If they are not stated, what do they need to do? Where do they get the answers? Probably from their understanding of the other words and phrases and sentences in the story. So they use the other words in order to interpret the answer to this question. So nandun pa rin, nasa kwento pa rin siya. Hindi lang siya explicit na nakasulat doon sa libro na ito yung sagot. Examples are yan, inferences, implications, generalizations, comparison and contrast, main idea, cause and effect, anticipation, prediction, character traits, emotional reactions, identification of motives of the characters. So halimbawa, ang text ay Umupo ang bata sa upuan sa kanto ng silid. Nilagay niya ang kanyang mukha sa kanyang mga kamay at unti-unting tumulo ang mga luha sa kanyang mata. Ang tanong ni teacher, ano ang nararamdaman ng bata? Ano ang pwedeng sagot? Nalulungkot. Pero narinig nyo ba yung salitang nalulungkot doon sa kwento. Pero ano ang ginamit natin? Paglalarawan. Yung paglalarawan. Na yung mga ibang salita na nasa kwento na inisipan natin ng generalization na ah, ito ang nararamdaman niya. Okay. Next. Level 3 is evaluation or critical reading. This involves the making of personal judgment. Ito na yung sagot mo, ma'am. On the text by the reader, usually based on his or her experience. So examples are evaluation of accuracy, of completeness, evaluation of the truthfulness of the text. Yung para sa iyo ba, totoo ba yung nangyayari na yan? Discrimination of fact and opinion. Sa palagay mo, talaga ba kayang nangyayari ito o iniisip lang yan ng manunulat? Recognition of emotionally charged words. Recognition of exaggerated claims. Identification of the author's purpose. Bakit kaya niya sinulat itong kwento na to? Identification of the author's mood and intent and evaluations of the values presented. So, pwedeng pagdating sa point na to, pwede na kayong magtanong ng questions na mahuhugot yung expressive objectives nyo. Kasi yung ibang expressive objectives ay maaaring naglalaman ng insights, ng values, So when you ask this level, in this level, pwede nang may lumalabas na sagot para doon sa target mong expressive objective. Uh, ano pa kaya ang halimbawa ng mga tanong na ito ang target? Ar halimbawa, araw sa palengke. Binasa ba sa inyo ang araw sa palengke? Sige nga, mag-isip nga tayo ng ilang halimbawa ng... 
nasa critical level of comprehension. O, di ba doon sa kwento, ang sabi nung nanay, huwag kang magpapabili, ha? Yung bata, di ba gustong-gusto niya magpabili, pero hindi siya nagpabili. Kaya ang tanong ni Sir, ano kaya ang magiging reaksyon nung nanay kung vinerbalize nung bata na gusto niyang magpabili? Pwede yan, Sir. Ano kaya ang dahilan ng magulang bakit niya binili? Critical comprehension. Tama ba ang ginawa ng nanay na binili niya ito kahit na sinabi niya na huwag kang magpapabili? Correct. Ano kaya ang layunin ng manunulat? Bakit niya sinulat itong kwento na ito? Ano kaya ang layunin ng manunulat kung bakit sa hulihan ay pinabili niya ang nanay ng regalo? Oh, these are very, very nice questions. And these are questions that would entail many responses. Okay. Ay, ang ganda rin yan. Paano kaya kung hindi binili ng nanay yung laruan? Okay, hindi lang iisa ang sagot nito kasi bakit kaya hindi lang iisa ang ma-generate natin na nasagot sa ganitong klasing tanong? Yes, ma. Correct. Kapag naharap tayo sa 40 na mga estudyante, 40 rin na backgrounds ang pinanggagalingan nila. So kung minsan, kung talagang diverse yung grupo, dun sa isang tanong, kayang-kaya na 40 rin ang magiging sagot at magiging dahilan sa kanilang sagot. Okay. Dito sa ganitong mga klasing tanong, una, nakikilala natin yung estudyante. Pangalawa, nakikita natin yung kanilang, yung pinahahalagahan sa buhay. Pangatlo, nakikilala din sila ng kanilang mga kaklase. Pang-apat, pwede rin silang matuto doon sa kung ano ang pinapahalagahan ng iba rin nilang kaklase. So, lumalawak yung kanilang kaalaman tungkol sa, uh, tungkol sa buhay, tungkol sa pagkatao, tungkol sa values, etc. Et okay, ito na. Babalikan ko na si ma'am at saka si sir. Level 4 ay integration or application to self, or application to life. So this level involves the reader putting himself or putting herself in the place of the character. Now reading is used for some practical purposes and even for values clarification. Dito na papasok yung question ni... Ma'am, na kung ikaw, kung ikaw yung bata, gagayahin mo ba siya na pipigilan mo din magpabili o magpapabili ka dahil gustong gusto mo? Tapos yung tanong ni Sir kanina, kung ikaw yung nanay, ibibili mo ba yung laruan? <laughs> wow, alam mo ma'am, totoo yan. Kung lola daw ang kasama, walang pahirapan. Walang hindi mahirap. Totoo po yan. Hindi lang lola, pati lolo. Okay. Now, Sometimes, the children can answer this easier than the critical thinking question. Because it's very, mas concrete sa kanila pag sinabing, oh kung ikaw yung kalaro, ano ang gagawin mo? Tapos when you're, when you're putting them into each other's shoes, Pwede kayong pumili ng ibat-ibang perspective or ibat-ibang point of view. Halimbawa, 
pwede mong kunin yung point of view ng listeners. Katulad nun, kung ikaw yung bata, magpapabili ka ba? Kung ikaw yung nanay, ibibili mo ba? Pwede rin maglagay ka ng point of view na ipapasok mo sila sa kwento. Halimbawa, kung ikaw yung kapatid ng bata, ano ang pwede mong sabihin or ano ang mararamdaman mo kung umuwi yung ate mo na may dalang laruan? Itong tanong na to, ilang sagot ang ma-generate nito? Madami din. Madami din siya kasi iba-iba rin yung pinanggagalingan ng mga bata. So, para doon sa level 3 at para sa level 4, ang sagot nila, manggagaling sa experiences nila, manggagaling sa values nila, manggagaling sa background nila. O, sige nga, tignan natin. Lipa tayo ng kwento. Doon tayo sa ang kamatis ni Peles. Makakaisip ba tayo ng ilang tanong para sa application to sell? Medyo mahirap yung kung ikaw ang kamatis, ha? <laughs> Kasi inanimate siya. Kung ikaw si Peles, gagawin mo rin ba yung ginawa niya? Ang daming ginawa ni Peles, di ba? Lunes, Martes, Miyerkules. Ganoon ka ba? Parang it's sort short of saying, ganoon ka ba katsaga? Ano pa? Okay. Maliban sa kamatis, ano pa ang itatanim mo? Munggo. 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 Ang walang kamatayang munggo. Meron pa po? Sino ba ang characters na, yes ma'am? Okay. Yung tanong mo, ma'am, would um, overlap between three and four. Kasi ang tanong ni ma'am, may pagkakataon ba sa buhay mo na nakatulong ka rin, katulad ni Hugo? Pero application din siya. Recall of experiences. Meron pa? Isa pa? Yes, ma'am. Okay, pakinggan natin ang tanong ni ma'am ha. Ang tanong ni ma'am, may pagkakataon ba na nawalan ng pag-asa si Peles nang hindi tumutubo ang kanyang kamatis? O parang... Level, depende siya sa sagot. Kapag ang sagot ay huhugutin doon sa kwento, Level 2 siya. Um, kasi um, ini-interpret niya. Pwede rin yung, kung ang pagkakasagot ng bata ay manggagaling sa kanyang experience, then it becomes a level 3 answer. Parang uh, pag tinignan mo yung level ng bata at Batay sa tanong ng teacher na itatapon sa bata, saan mo siya ikakategorya? Kasi hindi yan nakita sa kwento. Hindi. Eh. Wala siya sa one and two definitely. Kasi walang, walang sagot. Ang, ano na ang tanong kung ikaw? Ay hindi. Bakit, bakit, oh, bakit, binili? bakit kaya binili ng nanay ang palayok? Doon sa kwento, hindi talaga siya sinabi. Kasi yung towards the end... Nando na yung regalo eh. Ngayon ang tanong ni Sir, saan natin siya ikakategorize? Ano po? Up three. Yes. Um, yes, ma'am. Sa akin pong palagay ay sa level 3. Dahil sa hindi ang bata na, kung halimbawa ko yung nanay, bata sa aking experience. 
dahil ito'y tumupad sa usap ang aking anak na hindi magpabili, parang gantimpala ako sa kanya sa hindi niya pagpapabili, ang ibili siya ng bagay na alam kong gustong gusto niya. Okay. And then it becomes three. Pero halimbawa, sir, o pakinggan niya ang sagot ko, ha? Halimbawa, may mga bata na ang sagot ay, uh, Teacher, binili ng nanay yan kasi gusto niyang maging masaya yung bata. Kasi kung ako yung nanay, gusto ko rin maging masaya yung bata, kaya bibilin ko rin yan. So, kahit na ang question mo ay level 3, saan pumatak ang sagot ng bata? Levels 3 and 4. Kasi meron siyang dahilan eh. Tapos may pinanggagalingan yung dahilan niya. Okay. So, meron pagkakataon na even if you state the question to a specific level, yung magigenerate mong answer can be more than the level that it is posted in. Hindi siya nakabox. Yeah, oo, oh, oh, hindi siya nakabox. May mga, yung ibang teachers, pagka pinasulat nila ng questions, pinapasulat nila yung levels, which is okay, kasi ang rational doon, para alam mo na pag nag-post ka ng questions, hindi siya masyadong mabigat in a specific level. Pero, in a way, hindi siya boxed. Flexible siya depending on the answer of the students. So kahit na nakastate ka, um, dapat ang, ang pinaka-objective mo dyan ay ma-target yung lahat ng levels. Ah, teka, tapusin muna natin to. Next level or final level is number five which is creative reading. So this level involves coming up with new ideas, creating something from the text, reproducing text information in other forms. Halimbawa, uh, halimbawa, di ba dun sa kwento kinantahan ni Peles yung kanyang mga kamatis. O sige nga, kung ikaw si Peles, gumawa ka nga ng kanta na pwedeng kinanta niya noong gabing iyon. Um, you can make them dramatize a certain scene in the story. You can make them create another ending to the story. You can make them write a letter, pwedeng to the author, pwedeng to the illustrator, or even musical interpretation. Now, in this level of comprehension, pwede rin natin matouch yung... Uh, appreciation of the style of writing of the author. So, pwede rin tayong magtanong na, natuwa ka ba sa ending o sa pagkakasulat ng manunulat ng katapusan ng kwentong ito? Yes, yes ma'am. Pwedeng pwede. So, pwede rin, hindi lang tayo, kung pagka-picture books ang ating hawak, tandaan natin na yung gumawa ng libro na yon hindi lang author. Meron din tayong illustrator. So, pwede nyo rin yun, ano hen, i, pwede rin kayong magtanong doon sa style of presenting the story in pictures. May mga illustrators na, pansinin nyo ha, pag kayo ay nagbabasa ng storybooks, tingnan yung mabuti yung illustrations, kasi kung minsan, the illustrator can depict another story with the main story. Miss Yvette. Yes. Uh, <clears throat> nung nakaraang gabi, medyo... Hindi lang ako nagtatanong kasi wala pa naman sa post-trading. Pero kasi merong isang nagsasabi na na hindi ko matanggap, na sinasabi niya na bawal ang tanong na ganito. Nagustuhan niyo ba ang kwentong binasa? Kasi pag may sumagot na bata na hindi niya nagustuhan, parang hindi hindi siya tama o hindi. Pero bakit hindi siya tama? At okay. Maganda nga yun eh. 
Di ba? O sige. O may nabasa na ba kayong katulad nito? Eh ano naman kung wala at ano kung meron? Bakit hindi siya? Ba't, bakit parang sinasabi that it's a no, no as regards question to be given by the teacher and mm-hmm. at the same time to be answered by the kids? All right. Regarding your question, um, ang sabi natin kanina at the start of our lecture, wait lang, sir, ah. Here. When we present our story, we need to discuss it in order for the students to understand, appreciate, deepen their comprehension. Sometimes, right after presenting them the story, hindi pa ganon kalakas yung kapet ng kwento doon sa understanding ng bata. At that point, wag muna natin itanong. Kasi pagka sumagot na sila, whether it is a yes or a no, mapipeg doon yung kanilang decision. So, kahit na nakikinig sila, meron silang some kind of block na, ah, hindi, basta, parang papanindigan ko na na, hindi ko yan gusto. Kasi ganito, ganito. So, we would, uh, we would be, or we would be, making a wall for the students to understand or penetrate the story in a deeper manner. Uh, hindi ko nagustuhan, bakit? Nagustuhan ko, bakit? Di ba sa literary, crit- sa panunuring uh, pampanitikan, makikita mo yung mga ganitong uri na bata pa lang nakakakita na siya ng isang konsepto sa bagay na yon. So, yun pala ay hindi tama. Pwede kasi itanong yon uh, later. Later on. Kasi, pwe, yes, pagka na-discuss na, if their understanding or their literary um, perception will not change, and then they can explain why. They can explain why. Kasi talaga naman ganun eh, may mga bata talaga na hindi gusto itong kwento na to. At may mga bata na gusto. But we need to bring out first what we, they need to understand before they make a certain decision. Hindi po yung... Ang, ang reason... Hindi po definite reason na kaya ayaw natin yun itanong kasi ayaw natin makarinig ng sagot na no. Kasi gusto nga natin maging critical yung mga bata. So okay lang na sumagot sila ng no. What we need to do first is to make them understand what they are answering first. So if at the end you ask that and their answer is still no, then they can explain already why. Parang tayo din kung minsan, di ba, may mga libro na gustong gusto nating bilin, pag binasa na natin, Ayaw pala natin yung kwento. Eh talagang ganon, perception natin yon, And we have a reason for that. We just need to make them build the reason. Yung isang teacher na narinig ko, kaya ayaw niya yon itanong in the middle. Kasi ayaw din yang maapektuhan yung mga ibang bata na nakasagot ng no. Kasi pag narinig niya na no, ay, di ba ang bata, ano? Malakas ang peer, <laughs> malakas ang peer influenza. Ay, ayaw niya. Eh, friends kami. Ayoko na rin. So, parang ganon. Pero, sir, pwede siyang itanong later on. Hindi siya, hin- ayaw lang natin itanong immediately. Or even some children who in general would tell you they don't like the story, but they have certain parts of the story that they like. So, lalabas din yung reason no, na bakit ko gusto tong part na to, bakit ko gusto tong part na to. For a lot of children, malakas yung impact ng ending. So, pag yung ending hindi niya gusto, meron siyang, ay, hindi ko gusto ang kwento. Pero pwede mo itanong yan, kasi kahit na sabihin niyang, hindi ko gusto, and then you discuss, and then you will find out, ah, kasi yung ending ayaw niya. Pero itong part na to gusto niya. Itong part na to gusto niya. Meron akong na-observe na teacher na ang isang pinagawa niya, hindi siya song, hindi siya literary piece, gumawa siya ng homemade 
dough, yung clay, yung ang ginamit lang niya, arena and oil and water. Tapos pinagawaan niya ng diorama, yung kwento. Tapos that diorama stayed in the classroom for a week para makita nila, ay, ayan yung kwento namin kahapon. Ayan yung ginawa natin, no? Doon sa narinig natin na kwento. And you can, uh, this is the time that the teacher can also bring out the creativity that they have been hiding for so many years. And think of questions that will also bring out the creativity of the students. If you look at the um, framework of the HOTS or the higher order thinking skills, which is the same, yung, yung levels niya, ay ito, remembering, understanding, applying, analyzing, evaluating, and creating. It's almost the same except for this one. Yung application niya will come after understanding. Which is okay, hindi naman natin ginigage talaga kung ano yung three, kung ano yung four. What we need to remember is that we have to give questions of the different levels of understanding. But it's almost the same. Parang it's just the terms. Uh, hindi naman natin ibibigay yung terms sa ating mga studyante. But it is a guide for us. So whether we're using this or we're using the levels of comprehension, pareho lang siya, ma'am magkakaiba lang sa ibang terms. Pero yung, yung ang kailangan natin idig ay yung levels of understanding na draw out natin from our students. Okay. Sige, I will answer your question. Ang tanong ni ma'am, is it necessary to begin with literal going up? Okay. We will always have to start with the low-level question. But it is not a necessity na yung list mo ng question ay dapat nakapeg sa level. Halimbawa, question number 1 hanggang 15. Dapat ang level niya, 1, 1, 1, 1, 2, 2, 2, 2, 3, 3, 3, 3, 4. Hindi po. But we always start with level 1. We can skip and then return to 1 depending on this question uh, regarding the sequence or the flow of the story. So, halimbawa, question number one mo ay literal. Ang number two mo, pwede ring literal. Ang number three mo, pwede ng inferential. Number four, pwede ring critical. Number five, pwede kang bumalik sa literal. Kasi hindi rin yung... Yes, depende po sa sequence. We can not also say that we must generate the same number of questions for every level. Lalo na, kasi depende yun sa, sa age ng mga studyante. Sometimes when they're younger, they can answer more literal questions. When they get older, then you can give a lot of evaluate questions for evaluation, questions for application, and even questions for creative comprehension. But for grades 1, 2, and 3, minsan ang pin yung creative level, marami na sa kanya yung tatlo doon sa list mo ng 15. So hindi dapat tayo nakabox palagi. We need to know our students in order for us to list down questions. <coughs> eh, teacher, ilan bang tanong? Eh, teacher, ilan bang questions dapat sa number one, sa number two? Kayo po ang makakasagot niyan. Kasi kayo ang may kakilala doon sa haharapin yung studyante. Ang studyante ko ba, kaya ba niyang makasagot ng madaming application? Kung kaya, and then give. Pag hindi kaya, hindi natin yun pwedeng gawin. Because we will increase their level of anxiety, which we do not want to happen. We want to, we want to be developmentally appropriate. We have to start with where the students are. We have to adjust to where, how the students are responding to our questions. So halimbawa, this week, Marami kang literal comprehension. Pero napapansin mo na yung inferential questions mo, nadadalian silang sagutin. 
yung critical mo, madaling sagutin. And then next week, when you make your lesson plan, you also adjust. Kaya there's no definite formula. Kayo po ang makakadeside. You have to know your students. May tanong pa? Yes, sir. Just an enriching remark of our previous discussion. We're talking about the different levels of uh, questioning. We're talking about high order thinking skills. And I guess the goal of the reading plan is to reach the highest level of comprehension. And uh, scaffolding is very important. Like in every level, we are making use of all the levels. Like starting from the critical, we're using the information, we're using the data. And we are using this one up to the level, the highest level of uh, questioning. So we start from the literal, the informations are there. We go to the inferential, and we are making use of the informations to process reasoning of our pupils. So it's necessary that we understand kung saan na tayong level. And we do not forget na kailangan pa rin natin yung lower level because they support the idea of our learners. Correct. That's very true. Kaya nga, halimbawa, you list down your questions. Tapos napansin mo, eh hindi naman nila nasasagot yung tanong ko eh. What does that tell you? What does that tell the teacher? Modify. Simplify. Adjust. Okay. So, itong ginagawa natin, meron din dapat tong self-assessment on us as teachers. Hindi lang tayo pwedeng, eh kasi yan ang nakasulat sa learner's manual. Kasi yan ang nakasulat sa teacher's guide. Dapat yan ang susundin. Tama? Hindi. Kasi you have, kaya na sinabi ni sir, you have to know where your students are. You have to know how to adjust. So, pag iyan ang nakasulat sa teacher's guide at napansin mo na hindi masundan, then you have to know how to adjust to their level. Basta alam mo na ito ang goal mo. Okay, kunyari mag adjust ka. Ang pinaka-goal mo, marating kung ano yung dapat na, dapat na nandoon. Eh, teacher... Nung tinatanong ko naman yung nakasulat sa learner's manual, kayang-kaya na nilang sagutin eh. So what do you do? You can also adjust, but you don't adjust lower. You may adjust higher. You can give more challenging questions. Do not stunt the growth of your students dahil sa ito yung nakalagay dyan. Okay, tuloy na po natin, ha? Now, some tips. Before we go later, after the break, we're going to sit down with our groups and start formulating our questions. These are some of the things that we can be guided with. Number one, be guided by the sequence of the story. So, kaya ang isang reminder... If you work on a story, you have to study the story very well. So, dapat mas masasagot ni teacher ang tanong. Saan ba nag-uumpisa yung kwento? So, uumpisahan natin sa simula. Kaya natin siya uumpisahan sa motive question. Kasi ang formulation natin ng motive question ay it should be answerable in the first part of the story. Eh, teacher, hindi, meron pa akong gustong itanong before the motive question eh. Okay lang. Basta ang itarget nyo yung motive question, one of the first three questions that you're asking. Because you have to give them immediate answer. Kasi yun yung hanging question before the story. Make sure that all levels of comprehension are addressed. Do not be limited na... Kaya tulad na sinabi ko kanina, na equal number of questions ang ibibigay nyo. It, it will depend on who your students are, how they can answer your question, what the story that you are using is. 
Next, don't forget that don't forget the questions that will reflect the expressive objectives that you wrote in the beginning of your lesson plan. So, halimbawa, nalista niya na yung questions. Balikan nyo. Ay, nakuha ko ba to? Nakuha ko ba to? Sometimes you can even identify more expressive objectives pagka nasulat mo na yung tanong. Pwede mo idagdag. Remember that your lesson plan is just your guide. It should not be your your first and end. You can adjust it according to how your class needs it. Number four, there should be a smooth transition from one question to the next. Kaya may arrows na. You formulate your question depending on the answer. For some teachers, it is easier for them to write down their questions if they write the projected answer to their previous question. You can also do that. Yung, yung isang side mo is the teacher question. Yung isang side mo ay um, possible answers. E teacher, di ba may mga tanong na maraming possible answer? Di pwede mo lagay doon, many possible answers. Last one. For open-ended questions, encourage diverse responses from the students. Ito na yung pag nando na kayo sa actual classroom. Kasi sa lesson plan, hindi pa siya masyadong lumalabas. But when you give this out inside the classroom, mas maganda yung marami kayong mag-generate na answers. Yes, ma'am. Ayan, may dagdag. Of course, other tips are very welcome. <laughs> Suggestion lang. Dapat yung teacher ang siyang unang sasagot sa mga questions niya. Kasi there are teachers na akala nila correct yung questions nila. Pero kung sila ang sasagot, kung ipapasagot sa mga bata, ang mga bata ay hindi makasagot. Akala ng teacher, correct yung question. Mali pala. So dapat ang teacher ang siyang unang sasagot sa mga Tanong, what possible answers kaya ang maibibigay ng mga bata? You know, that's a very nice suggestion. Kasi kung minsan, kapag tayo ang nagsusulat ng tanong, hindi natin napapansin na yung pagkakasulat ng tanong, mahirap siyang sagutin. Kaya maganda nga na, ah, pag ikaw ang nagsulat, pag binasa mo, tama, dapat ikaw din ang unang makakasagot. Sige ma'am. Tapos, Pag nag-formulate tayo, tayo ng ating objectives, sa akin bilang teacher noon, una kong ginagawa ang questions. Pag ito ang objective ko, ginawa, ginawan ko agad ng questions. Kasi mas, mas guided ang teacher pag nakafocus doon sa objectives. Um, maybe that will also depend on the teacher and the lesson. Because... There may be some lessons na pwedeng gawin yun, but there are also some lessons na um, you have to follow a certain set of objectives also. May tendency kasi ang teacher na gawa ng maraming question, ito literal, ganun-ganun, pero wala doon sa kanyang objectives. Correct. Correct. That's why when you formulate questions, dapat you are also guided. Yes, alam mo output. You are guided with your objectives and vice versa.